Keep it here. Kirk Parker has your local sports report next. He'll take you to regional championships in high school play, boys baseball and girls softball in action. Highlights you'll want to catch coming up. As regional playoffs continue, so does the excellent pitching of Williamsville's Colin Brennan. Today, the senior bullet was a perfect shot in his team's matchup against Riverton, this meaning a perfect game. The coaches and Blue in pregame discussions wonder if they're talking about the guy in focus, Brennan. After striking out the side in the first, Brennan gets a swinging K here. Then Justin Barney goes down. Again, Brennan with a perfect game in this one, but to get the win, he needs the offense. Williamsville with the runner at third. Corey Pelk with the absolute rope here to right center. Keep an eye on the ball. It one hops to the fence. Clint Jeffers crosses the plate. But look at Pelk on the top of your screen going. Check out the dirt coming up from the shoes. Pelk slides in the third. He does get in there for the triple. Riverton's Alex Kohler looking outside the fence here because Greg Van Leer went deep. The smile on his face. Bullets puts up 10. They win this one 10 nothing after five innings. Bill and Riverton in a regional matchup this afternoon. Let's focus on this guy. It's Colin Brennan. After striking out the side in the first, Brennan gets a swinging K here. Then Justin Darney goes down. Brennan pitched a perfect game in this one. But to get the win, he needs some offense. It's Williamsville with the runner at third. Corey Pelk, the absolute smash to right center. Check it out. A one hop to the fence. Greg Van Leer would add a homer. Again, Colin Brennan, a perfect game. Congratulations. The Bulls actually win this one 10 zip after five innings. First round of sectional baseball starts today. The Bullets facing Stanford Olympia. Williamsville has allowed just two runs so far this postseason. The Bullets with Colin Brenneman. Brennan striking out Nick Brenneman. And fans watching when Alex Wiley will hit two home runs today. Here he is circling the bases. The Bullets score four in the seventh to take the lead, and they win eight to seven. Joe, keep it here. Kirk Parker has your local sports report next. High school sports is in full swing this weekend. We'll bring you the Cooking in Riverton as the sectional of Williamsville taking on Mount Pulaski. The Bullets shooting first. Clint Jeffers with the smash to second. Can't be handled, allowing Alex Yerbes to score one zip. After the inning, the Hilltoppers determined not to give up, and they don't. Dan Gleason finds a hole up the middle. Brad Diver rounded third, chugging hard. He scores after Zach Moore crosses the plate. 2-1 Mount Pulaski, but in the fourth bottom, it's Yerbis, and this time he can just jog around the bases. This ball is over the fence for a home run. This ties the game at two. The Bullets score three in the bottom of the sixth to win 5-4. They move on to Super Sectionals Monday morning in Bloomington. Baseball teams are set to make a state field trip to Springfield. Now today, if both Williamsville and Auburn record wins, they will make the Class A state tournament at Lanphier Park. Now, according to IHSA record books, no two Class A schools from Sangamon County have ever made the state trip in the same year. Let's see how the Bullets fared with Princeton Williamsville throwing Colin Brennan, the pitcher so far unbeaten on this season. He was all but unhittable on the day. Brennan with a strikeout here. Now the Bullets take a one-run lead when Alex Urbis will crack a home run. And Princeton finds themselves down and in a bad spot with Brennan on the mound for the Bullets. Urbis rounds third base. Now whenever Princeton would put the bat on the ball, which wouldn't be too often in this game, they would find themselves hitting into some pretty good gloves. Charlie Jewlett with the scoop and the flip over to second for the out. Now there are 21 outs in a high school game. Brennan recorded 17 of them with strikeouts. Williamsville wins five. Nothing even with Brennan feeling a little under the weather. The senior tosses a shutout to send his team to states. My arm felt great. I felt really bad, sick. sick. But yeah, We're real sick. sick. Stomach, head, chest, throat, everything. Just out of energy, but battled through it, and teammates helped me out getting me all the runs. So I knew early in the game that I thought some, some balls were going to start falling because we were hitting it solid, making some solid outs, but I was just happy with their overall performance as far as not being nervous and ready to go. Later on in sports, the state playoff picture gets a little clearer this afternoon. You're watching Nightcast. Memorial Day may be a holiday for most Americans, but for area athletes, it means it's time to go back to work. Williamsville and Princeton giving their fans something to do on this day off, meeting in Bloomington in their super sectional bottom of the third. No score. Alex Urbus changing that with a little swing of the bat. The solo shot to deep left made it one zip bullets on top, and they weren't done. They would add to that. Still in the same inning. Now it's Jared Zwick at the plate. He's finding the lawn and right. That's going to bring home Clint Jeffers 
and make it two to nothing Williamsville. Top of the fourth, Princeton threatening with runners on second and third, but Colin Brennan gets Andrew Rose to hit nothing but oxygen and in the inning. Bottom half, Bullets back at it and getting a little bit of help. Urbis back at the plate, but this time just chopping it. Looks like it's a routine play, but Tony McCombs throws it to first. He goes a little high, allowing David Miller to come home. Williamsville would add two more runs down the stretch and go on to win it. The final was five to nothing. Lanphier Ballpark has stood here on the north side of Springfield since 1928. And while the park has seen some renovations over the years, it remains obsolete compared to newer facilities like O'Brien Field in Peoria, barely celebrating its third birthday. Cities with newer ballparks like Sauge and Champaign are bidding to host the Class A tournament for the next five years, which means Springfield has to turn the IHSA's attention elsewhere. Because they're student athletes, they ought to be able to get to do some other things while they're here uh, that, in, that sort of enhance and enrich uh, their overall experience. And Springfield's got that with that museum, with the other sites in the area. There are certainly some wonderful opportunities for furthering their education as well as furthering their baseball experience. IHSA Executive Director Marty Hickman says he was impressed by the royal treatment teams received yesterday and says that added experience is also what his board of directors will factor into any decision. Landfear Ballpark may be lacking in physical amenities, but this ballpark may offer something that no other facility can, nostalgia when it comes to IHSA Executive Director Marty Hickman. I spent a lot of time here myself. I grew up close to here in New Berlin and have a lot of fond memories of playing here. Uh, you know, a long time ago, of course, but uh, it's very familiar to me. It's very comfortable here, and uh, certainly uh, that's really not a factor, but it does bring back good memories every time I come into this place. Hickman admits Peoria Stadium is impressive, and he still must visit facilities in Sauge and Joliet, but he says a stadium's age is not necessarily the determining factor when awarding a contract for the tournament. In Springfield, Chris McLeod, News Channel 20. And Hickman says Springfield has always been a great host for the Class A baseball tournament, but many in the sports community think building a new stadium with better highway access would not hurt in the future. State baseball playoffs kicked off here in Springfield today. That's right. News Channel 20's Kirk Parker joins us live from Lanthier Park with more. Kirk. Williamsville and Auburn both shoot for the semifinals. The Bullets already played. The Trojans beginning here soon. These stories and more next in sports. Good night, everyone. We're live at Robin Roberts Stadium at Lanphier Park for the site of the Class A Championship Games. Now, Williamsville played earlier this afternoon. Auburn about to begin here shortly. This morning, though, it was the Bullets who played against Woodstock. Williamsville sent their ace, Colin Brennan, to the mound. Brennan is undefeated with an ERA under one this season, and today those stats stayed intact. Brennan had to throw only 86 pitches in the game as he struck out six. But here's some offense. Jared Zook singles to left. It's a dying quail, and it counts. Clint Jeffers would score, giving the Bullets a run one lead, and that's all they needed. Some defensive help. The 4-6-3 double play. Charlie Jewett to Andrew Veach. The Bullets make the semis, winning 4-zip. Yeah, he's done that all year. Uh, got some performance. He still wasn't up to par. Uh, throat was still bothering him. Strength a little bit down, but... I'll tell you what, he just, you know, he gets it out and, and did a great job pitching. And I thought our defense was excellent. By him. The Bullets play back here tomorrow morning at 9 against Lombard. Brennan says he will be available to pitch as a closer if needed. A baseball tournament to Lanphier Park taking on Lombard Montini. Picking up bottom of the third, the Bullets have a runner on first with two out. Clint Jeffers lines it, opposite field hit. Right fielder has some trouble. Mark Schultz all the way in. Around to score, makes it a 2-1 game. Next batter, it's Jared Zook. Watch this, the dying quail blooper. Just out of the reach of both the first baseman and the right fielder, they tumble it, trying to get Jeffers scores, ties the game at two apiece. But Montini would go up 5-2. Williamsville would put together a late rally in the bottom of the seventh. After the Bulls score on the fielder's choice, Greg Van Leer gets a two-out hit to fall. Jeffers would score, but the rally falls short. The Broncos of Lombard would go on to defeat the Bullets by a score of 5-4. On this loss, Williamsville then playing for third place. The Bullets taking on T-Town. Williamsville down one zip in the third until junior catcher Alex Urbis. This ball is monstrous. A towering home run to left, a two-run shot, 2-1 Williamsville. Bullets, they add another run in the third, and then great defense in the fourth. Watch this. 
Looks like Jimmy Edmonds, center fielder Mark Schultz goes back. The miraculous catch in center field. That saves a run to the fifth inning. It will be Alex Urbis again. This time it's a solo shot to left center. Now this long ball actually ties a state tournament record with two homers in the same game. But Williamville loses 5-4 and a finish a great season in fourth place. Well, Kirk Parker joins us now with a look ahead at sports. Mark? <laughs> Williamsville yesterday had some top finishes for the softball and baseball teams. Town residents hit the streets to recognize their players of their accomplishments. The story more coming up. Can't wait, but before that, it's time for commentary. Here's Mark Hyman with the point. Spring season for the Williamsville Athletic Program. The softball team played for the state title last night. Baseball was one of four teams shooting for a chance in the state crown this weekend. Both groups fell just a tad short, but with records of 32-5 and 38-3, and, and three, that's just a tad short of perfect. And today those efforts were recognized with the break through Williamsville and Sherman. The two teams rode through the towns aboard fire trucks, receiving ovations from residents on a strong 2005 season. Some folks even followed the caravan through town, which eventually stopped at the school gymnasium. The teams showed off their trophies, the girls taking second in softball, the boys fourth in baseball, and a lot of returning players on both teams for next year's season, meaning a couple departing seniors say the success for the program should continue. They're going to do just fine next year. They've got some freshman sophomores that are going to step up and help them. We've got just tons of players coming back. They're going to do just fine. I I'd like to see him back at State next year also. It hits me pretty hard only because I only had one chance to get to do this, but I'm proud of the underclassmen starters and all the underclassmen on the team because they have more opportunities to get to do this. Being a freshman, this is unbelievable. Um, I never thought I'd get to play varsity and I did and it's so exciting because I know I have three more years to do this and it makes me want to do it so much because it was so much fun. Well, after the parade outside, a ceremony was held in the gym where the eruption from the fans continued. Some of the players and coaches addressed the crowd. A great event today for a solid season for baseball and softball.